we are into the housing of the hot end assembly. Now, um, I do like that the fans look like they will be easily replaced. What I would like to see you guys start doing, especially on a pro model like this, I would like to start seeing plugs. So instead of having all these wires go to their constituent components, I think, I want to say it's G-Tech who's doing this, but they have um, the wires instead go to sockets on the plate for the hot end. And then each of these components then plugs into that same board. So that if I want to replace the fan, I simply unscrew the fan, unplug it from its socket, put the new fan in, plug it into its socket, done. In order to replace one of these components on your system, I would have to either cut and solder the wires here or fish the wires through this drivetrain all the way to here and this proprietary connection, which may or may not be plugged. Is that pl Oh, it is. Never mind. Okay. So for anybody else who sees this, the they are plugged in here. So we are going to open that too. Oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. You did exactly what I want. It's all plug and play inside here. I only have to fish it back to here. That's good enough. I'm happy with that. The advantage of that keeps that nice and lightweight and clean. So I'm okay with that. That's good. We can work with that. Fans, however, I would still like to see the plugs here. So I have an inline plug that's inside the casing here because they're a component that fails a lot. You know, once a year, you're going to have to replace fans if you use your printers like I do. Um, it'd be nice to not have to fish them through here, but that's a minor thing. This is good enough having all the plugs in here. That's that's good. I like that. Brand new hot end assembly. It looks very nice and machined. I do not see any extra bolts going through here, which would act as a thermal transfer medium like I've seen on your Ender 3 hot ends. You guys got to get the factory to take those extra two screws out. That's no good. <laughs> this looks good. This looks nice. I don't see any issues. Looks nice and stable. It's rock solid. Doesn't wiggle. Looks nicely machined. It'll be interesting to eventually get a look inside of here and see what kind of hot end that is. I'm hoping you've gone back to threading the um, hot end. I would like to see you guys switch to your silicone boots. You have those new silicone boots that are out. I have some here. They're not yours, but the same thing. Are they? There we go. These things. So I would like to see you guys include these with the printers now instead of the um. Will this fit on here? No, this is a different design. The wires are in a different spot so I can oh wait a minute wait a minute yeah this will work I think maybe possibly oh yeah I think this will work this might work yeah that will work okay good I'm gonna do that but I would like to see you guys go to include this the pro model include this it's just it's nicer than this and this also helps stop blobbing from occurring on the end of the uh, thing. Makes it easy to repair and maintain. It's just nicer in general. Not a huge deal. Just one of those little things you notice I'd like to see. I'm assuming this will be molded once you've confirmed you get good cooling from it. So I will assume that will happen. Uh, otherwise, I see no problems. This looks like it's nice and tight. I don't, I don't feel any play. This feels tight enough. That's a little on the loose side. So I am probably going to tighten this up a little tiny little bit. So I can, I can flex that a little bit. Just a little. I would like to see this widened a little bit. This is a little hard to get on and off here. It's kind of janky the way you got to do it. And then once you have it here, it's a little hard to reach the screw. So I'm not, I, get, I think the only way to fix that is to move it over a little bit if you can. But otherwise, much nicer looking hot end. I like it. It looks much more elegant, looks much more professional and refined. So good job on that. We'll see how it performs. I have to go into a little more depth on this. 
Um, I love this new feeder assembly for your hot end. It's beautiful. I love the fact that it looks like you're using the same compression fitting on both ends. That's great. It reduces your porch supply. I love the dual hop gear with the connected drive unit so that both are driven. What I don't like is, or it's not my own don't like, it's what I hope you can fix is the, the gap here. I think it might still be a little too large. Try running some Ninja Flex through this. I will also try to run some Ninja Flex through this, but I suspect this gap here is big enough to permit Ninja Flex to fold and pass through. So tightening up the tolerances between this entry point and these two hop gears so that the filament has no place to go but inside that hole, that would be nice. I do like the um, new tough tubing you have here. I don't know if this is actual Capricorn or if this is your guys' version of it, but it does appear to be a tighter tolerance. Um, the hole looks cleaner and tighter than regular PTFE tube, so hopefully that will work well. I will be sure to give you feedback once I have it printing. But in general, this new feed unit is amazing. Good job. I like that the um, filament sensor is all nice finished aluminum housing now. What I don't like is hopefully this is more reliable than previous units. What would happen is you'd get false positives. I hope you fix that. The only problem is, as I explained earlier, when we feed filament, we push the filament in here. It comes out there and goes in there. Well, sometimes I have to get the filament and I have to push filament in. So what I'll do is I will squeeze this with one hand and then push filament in by hand. And what will happen here, though, is it will buckle in here if there's any resistance. And that will be hard to fix. An easy solution to that would be to have a little piece of PTFE tube here. So have a hole here and here about a quarter inch deep. Maybe, yeah, about a quarter inch, half inch deep, about that deep right there. Big enough to accept a piece of PTFE tubing. So the PTFE tubing will be locked in place in between these two pieces. So the filament will pass through the sensor, through the PTFE tube, and into the printer, giving it no place to go except where it needs to go. And if I have to push a little bit on this end, I'll be able to know that this is captured here and it won't buckle. The other problem is, what happens when the filament breaks here and I pull this out, but there's still a piece in here going into here. Right now, the only way to extract that filament, since I can't get my hand in here, I, I can't get a grip on this and push it. I can grab it, but I can't push it. There's not enough room. So this needs to either be back here, which wouldn't look very nice, or um, a way of popping this off and sliding this off the end. So unplug it disengage it and slide it off the end so that I can then grab the filament, push it, and then retract it and pull it out. Um, I guess in theory, this should be able to pull the filament back, but that doesn't always work. So something to think about. Maybe it's not a problem. Maybe it'll be a non-issue. I don't know. What I don't like is there's, it's still a switch. So I don't know how reliable that switch is going to be. We shall see.